Lauren Winter. Ring any bells? Nope. Can't say it does. Oh, that Lauren Winter. Third floor, last door on the left at the end of the corridor. Winter? Sorry, I only see clients by appointment. It's 50 bucks. I don't kiss and I don't do any weird shit. Fine by me. Put your money on the table. You got exactly 10 minutes when the alarm rings, it's over, okay? You should take your clothes off. We ain't got all day. Actually, I'm not a customer. Ugh, shit, a cop. I should've known. What you want, a freebie? Is that it? My name is Scott Shelby. I'm a private detective. The families of the victims of the origami killer asked me to investigate the murders. I came here just to ask you some questions about Johnny. I already told the police all I know and I have nothing to add. Leave me alone. I understand, Lauren. I know what you're going through. Oh yeah? You know what it feels like to find your own son's body on a wasteland? I'm sorry, I don't believe you have the slightest idea what I'm going through, Mr. Shelby. There'll be other victims if we don't stop the killer. You have got to help me, Lauren. You may know something that can aid the investigation. Help you? There's nothing you can do! My son's dead, do you hear me? He's dead! If we don't find the killer, there'll be other mothers who find their son's body on a deserted wasteland. But, but, but you're right. Why should you care? It's not your problem anymore, right? What do you want to know? Did Johnny live with you? Yes. Of course, I made sure he never met any of my clients. I wanted to stop, you know. But we needed the money. I was trying to earn enough to get us out of here. Did you suspect anyone after he disappeared? I meet a lot of pretty shady characters in my line of work. Sure, I thought of it at first. But it didn't seem to make any sense. I don't believe any of my clients could have done that to my Johnny and all those other kids. You want one? No thanks, I quit. That's brave. Tell me about Johnny. What kind of kid was he? Johnny was really a good boy. Sometimes he fought with other kids who called me a, you know. In his own way, I think he understood what was going on. How did your son disappear? He used to go play with the neighborhood kids after school. 
It was pouring down something awful that day. I'll never forget it. All his friends came home around five. All except him. Time's up, Mr. Shelby. I hope you got what you wanted. Now get out of here. Open up, baby. It's me. Troy, what are you doing here? I already told you I don't want to see you anymore. Sorry, Dal, but I really wanted to see you. What do you want, asshole? Lauren, is everything all right? She's just swell. Now beat it, loser. Again? If you're looking for trouble, you found it. I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. Oh. Uh. 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 Asshole. Are you all right? Better than him, I guess. Who is he? An ex-client who thinks he owns me. He was getting violent, and I told him I didn't want to see him anymore. Well, you should be careful. He'll probably be back. Sorry about the mess. Mr. Shelby? Yeah. Thanks.
The zone is sectioned off, sir. Please step back. Agent Norman Jaden, FBI. You got a badge or something, Mr. Jaden? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Check. You can pass. I'm looking for Lieutenant Blake. Is he around? I saw him arrive earlier. He's here somewhere. Thanks. Video memo recording, Agent 47023, Norman Jaden, Tuesday, October 4, 2011. Time is 8.14 a.m. I'm looking for Lieutenant Carter Blake. Thanks. to the investigation. Some orchid pollen. The concentration of pollen in the air is quickly decreasing because of the rain, but it gets higher in the direction of the body. Hey! You there! What are you doing? Lieutenant Blake, I'm Agent Norman Jaden from the FBI. I went by your office this morning, they told me to be here. Now if you're looking for rain, dead bodies, and highways, you come to the right place. Mike, will you tell that asshole with the bulldozer to stop for five minutes? I can't hear myself think here. Right away, Lieutenant. Well, are you coming, Jaden? So, what happened? Some guy, taking his dog for a piss, found a body about 6 o'clock this morning. We don't know much more right now. Based on what we've seen, looks like the work of the origami killer. Any witnesses? None yet. Given the neighborhood, I'd be surprised if anybody saw anything. Any news on the coroner? He's on his way, Lieutenant. We've been waiting for an hour, for fuck's sake. Has the body been identified? No, not yet. We should know more later today. There are a lot of people on the crime scene. Aren't you afraid your men might destroy some clues? You don't find proof sitting behind a desk. We're not in the habit of trampling things into the ground, even if we're not in the FBI. No, no, of course not. That's, that's not what I meant. Tony, I don't want to see a single shit-stirring journalist within a mile of here. You got it? Yes, Lieutenant. Do we know the cause of death? There are no marks on the body. Chances are he was drowned, like the others. The case seems to be attracting the attention of the media. Yeah, a greedy pack of vultures. These guys have killed their mothers for a school. 
some investigation. It's becoming a three-ring circus. Listen, I, I'm a little busy here. Why don't we discuss all this a little later, back at the office? Oh, no problem. I understand. Do you mind if I vote around? Be my guest. Hey, Jaden. Come and see me if you find anything, okay? We're on the same team now. Barry Cameron, sample of no interest. Comes from one of the policemen present on the wasteland. Comment, the victim is lying on his back. No visible signs of violence. Superficial wound on the right thigh. Blood analysis suggests it could be post-mortem. Probably a scratch that occurred when the body was being moved. The blood report indicates an advanced and long-lasting state of exhaustion. His face is covered with mud, like the other victims. A small origami figure in the right hand. Fingers were probably closed after the time of death. An orchid was placed on the victim's chest. The victim is Jeremy Bowles, declared missing five days ago. See reference file. Particles disappear in the tall grass. It's probably the end of the trail. Harry Cummins traces of blood on the railroad track. Analysis confirms it comes from the victim. Footprints continue just after the pollen trail. There's a good chance that they're the killers. Harry Connor, the traces of blood on the fence behind the railroad line. It comes from the victim. Killer came this way with the body and probably grazed it on his way through the fence. Oh.
tire tracks on the side of the road behind the railroad line. It may be the killer's car. We have seen all there is to see. There's a good chance that they're the killers. Heading back to the office. You staying? No, I've seen enough. I'm leaving too. A butterfly. A fox. A crab. Death. Death. I have the results of your MRI scans. Everything seems to be normal. There is no physical damage from the accident. However, I am worried about your psychological condition. I know it's not easy, but you've got to start over, Ethan. You're not responsible for what happened. It's my fault Jason is dead. He'd still be alive if I'd been looking out for him. It was an accident. Accidents happen every day. You can't blame yourself forever for your son's death. How is Sean? He's a very solitary kid, you know, very focused within himself. He's really close to his mother. With me, he's more distant. And what about you, Ethan? What do you feel? I no longer want to live. I have no reason to continue. 
Not even for your son, Sean. I couldn't save Jason. Sean doesn't need a father like me. Is there something else you wanted to tell me, Ethan? I sometimes have these... blackouts. Times when... I don't know what I'm doing. I recover consciousness sometime later. But I'm someplace else. And I have no idea how I got there. Do you think this could be related to the accident? You suffered a massive concussion and were in a coma for six months. We really don't know what effect a shock like that can have on the brain. That's the end of this session. Uh, we'll continue this conversation next week. You were lucky, Ethan. It's very rare to survive such a traumatic accident. I don't exactly feel lucky, Doctor. Aren't you going to go play with the other kids? I don't feel like it. Is something the matter, Sean? No, I'm all right. Do you want to eat something? How did things go at school today? The teacher yelled at me for being late again. She's gonna send me home the next time it happens. I'm sorry about that, Sean. Next time, we'll really pull it together, okay? We're just not communicating. It feels like we're drifting apart. Maybe you'd like to have a turn on the swings. I haven't been on a seesaw in a long time. What do you think? Yeah! I give it a try? Dad? Do you want to give it a try? I won't be able to do it. Oh, come on. Let's try it together. 
Now, the main thing is to get the right position at the beginning. Now, you've got to throw it straight and a little to the right. Now, throw it! I did it! I did it, Dad! Good job, Sean! See? That wasn't so hard. Maybe he'd like to have a turn on the swings. What about that merry-go-round? I bet I can push you so fast you won't be able to stay on it. Great! Training for astronauts, though. <laughs> Why'd you stop? Come on, Dad! Higher! having fun. Looks like rain's coming. I think we better go. Okay. You know, sometimes I remember before, I mean when Jason was still here, sometimes I wish everything could just be the way it was before. Me too, Sean. Me too. What are you doing? I'm coming. Come on, Dad. What are you doing? I'm coming.
Hey, Dad, can I have a ride on the carousel? Can I? Sure. Go pick a horse and get on. I'll get a ticket. One, please. That's a dollar. Thank you.